Great Lakes Prepping here. As some of you know, I'm an amateur radio operator and ham enthusiast. Ham radio is obviously an oft-discussed topic among preppers, but the large, vibrant ham radio community extends far beyond people who are specifically aiming to be prepared for large-scale disaster. Thousands of new amateur radio licenses are issued in the United States every year, across every state, and in practically every age group. And the one thing every one of those licensees have in common is that they had to study for and pass a ham radio operator exam. And while ham radio license exam study materials have gotten more robust since the early days, where you pretty much bought a thick textbook and that's it, my guest today still found them to be pretty lacking and chose to do something about it. James Cribbs is the founder of hamradioprep.com. Created in 2017, when James was trying to get his amateur radio license, but found existing study materials to be outdated and hard to use. Since creating Ham Radio Prep, James has sought to revolutionize ham radio education, creating courses that include videos, games, and practice tests. He is also creator of the World Radio League Online Logbook, a new approach to the digital ham radio logbook. James, thanks a lot for joining me today and talking about ham radio. Thank you very much, John. I know we've been playing uh, a little bit of email tag to get it scheduled, so I'm glad I'm glad we were able to finally make it happen, and uh, I'm very, very happy to talk ham radio with you today. Awesome. So uh, right off the top, in, in relatively simple terms, can you tell us what ham radio prep is and sort of how it came to be? Yeah, a hundred percent. So, um, so, uh, my name's James, my amateur radio call sign is, uh, Kilo November four, November echo hotel or, or KN four, uh, N E H. That's just the phonetic alphabet version of that for those who are kind of newer to the ham radio world. But, uh, ham radio prep is a program to help people get your ham radio license and really a fast and, and easy way. Um, We've been around since 2018 when I started it. Um, I kind of find that there's a lot of different paths into ham radio. Like for me, I kind of it was kind of the nerd path in a way. Like I, I was a I was an engineering student, and so we had like a satellite club. Like one of the things you can do with ham radio is you can make uh, satellite contacts. And uh, so we had a satellite club in college. And when I went to go get my ham radio license, I looked out at what was out there, and I was like, eh, there's there's got to be a better way to do this. So that was kind of the genesis of uh, ham radio prep. That's been a long time ago now. Now we have um, a staff of, of uh, ham radio professors. Uh, but basically what sets ham radio prep apart when you're trying to get your ham radio license is we just have a really straightforward, simple, easy program. You watch a video. It teaches you the basic concepts. You read a lesson. You take a quiz. And you just go through the course like that. It takes for many people it only takes about three hours to get through it then you're ready to go pass and get your your ham radio license exam so we've kind of made a system that's really easy it works for all learning styles and you can get your call sign and get up on the air quickly so i kind of answered a few questions there sure, but sure. no that's good <laughs> a few kind of threads to pull on yeah you know when i first uh decided to get my ham radio operator license um, you know, I went about it in probably the way that a lot of people do. And, and I have a problem retaining information and studying. I, I have to do things before I'm going to remember it. Uh, but I, I approached this different. I think it was the dead of winter. I was just like, I'm going to study for this thing. But I ended up finding myself learning the most by, I don't remember what it was, but one of the online practice quizzes that's out there. Taking that quiz about 900 times until I essentially probably just kind of memorized which answer it was supposed to be uh, rather kind of than force, yeah. really retaining the information, which honestly didn't come to me until I was more doing it. But that's just how it kind of goes. Uh, so it sounds like your, your platform is maybe designed a little bit better for the uh, actual information retention uh, leading yeah, up to and- it. And I mean, that's kind of the thing is 
when I when I was coming along and getting my light ham ham license, which is like six years ago now, like what people were telling me was go buy this textbook. Mm-hmm. And I was like, a textbook? Like to read a full textbook? Like who in who in the hell is gonna do that? You know? Sitting but, on that uh, shelf right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so so I was like, I'm not gonna read a textbook. And then the other thing was like, you know, then there's just like the brute force like sort of quiz way. And I was like okay, well you can do that, but then you're really not going to learn anything. Mm -hmm. And so what, what ham radio prep does is we kind of try to go right down the middle. It's got video lessons that teach you the fundamentals, but we're also not going to like ramble for an hour about a topic that you're better off just kind of getting on the air and like learning and Mm -hmm. trying to get to that first, that first contact, actually like logging your first contact on, on ham radio, which that's a whole nother topic. And, um, it's not as hard as people make it out to be. I think that's just kind of, there's kind of like this force. Sometimes it feels like a barrier to entry into ham radio. And so what we're trying to do, you know, me and there's a few other of, uh, of us over here at ham radio prep, we're just hams who we're just trying to just kind of break down that barrier to entry because yeah. to me, like, um, I'll go on a little bit of an aside here, but you've got, FRS radios, which is like you buy off the shelf from mm-hmm. uh, from Walmart or whatever, and those are great. They're walkie talkies around the house or whatever, but like you get up to a mile and they're kind of useless. Oh yeah. Then then you've got um, GMRS, which GMRS is really good. Uh, I actually love uh, GMRS as well too. And here in Georgia, up in North Georgia, we've got some uh, GMRS repeater networks. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Uh, but it's also kind of like limited on the channels. You can't really do as much with like radio customization. So oh, as yeah. far as what's available to just the general citizens, ham radio is the top. Like that's that's where you go. And then you've got even within that technician, which is the level one easiest, mm-hmm. general, which is the level two. And that's where you get onto HF bands. Mm-hmm. For most people, that's the sweet spot. Because once, once you can talk on HF, now you can most bands you can go up to a hundred watts of power, yeah. but you don't even need that much with ham radio. A lot of the times you set up a wire antenna in your backyard. I, I can with my with my wire antenna on my backyard. I can hit all of the U.S. I can go. I can get Europe. I can get South America. Wow. Um, and that antenna costs like a hundred bucks. Um, wow. Now I do have a pretty nice uh, radio, but you sure. can also get a you can also get a HF radio pretty budget too that's actually one of the um we're working on a new instructional on that of like a budget hf station if you Mm want to um if you want to start making like those long range uh across all the u.s europe south america whatever with your own equipment so i mean there's just not as far as the radio services are concerned ham radio is the king um to me it's the most fun you get the most power you get the most range and um yeah I mean, oh yeah. I, I like for anybody that's for anybody that's looking to get into a radio, it's worth it to get the license in my opinion. Would you say the platform um is is well suited for somebody who knows of ham radio and and the people that kind of follow the the prepper mindset are a perfect example. They they want to think about communications should say the internet stop working for some amount of time. And ham radio is the obvious way to go. Um but they know nothing else about it. Just absolutely from scratch. They think, you know, I'm going to buy this little Baofeng walkie talkie and I'm going to be able to talk to my relatives, you know, 10 counties away or whatever. Is your, is the ham radio prep good for somebody who knows just nothing? Yeah, absolutely. And, and we intentionally make it so it's a hundred percent for beginners we do have some people that join in and they're more like, you know, engineers or something, but it's really, the course is really geared towards beginners. You, mm-hmm. you're, you come in knowing nothing and you come out with your license and knowing the basics. And I would say three to five hours of, um, of study. Now, um, you raised a good point though, you know, the emergency communications. Um, I think sometimes the prepper uh, movement gets a little bit of a bad rap, but I can tell you as the CEO of Ham Radio Prep, the emergency communications aspect is very real. We work with like a, um, we work with a hospital system in Florida who I won't say the name of it because uh, for like privacy reasons, 
but we've gotten um, they they have had multiple instances through hurricanes where their communication systems go completely out and they can't they can't locate life saving resources without ham radio license. So mm-hmm. we we went into the hospital systems, make sure everyone got licensed up. They got they got trained, and then they have a, they have equipment that they can communicate with their local teams, emergency response teams, using amateur radios in those areas. And before they had amateur radio really set up in those hospitals, they just have a complete blackout outage. Mm-hmm. And um, it's not just uh, it's not just hurricanes. There's also things called. Um, I can't remember what it's called uh, exactly, but like the cell tower, uh, basically infrastructure to put this really simply, like you've got your cell phone. This is just using free. This is just using a different set of frequencies than ham radios Mm -hmm. to talk to. In many cases, you've got like 5G or 4G Mm -hmm. and that's, that's communicating to whatever are the closest towers around you. Right. Well, in, some cases what happens is either you have an issue with those private corporations or you have an event like a mass calling event where everyone tries to use Mm -hmm. the network at the same time and it shuts down and you don't have to look far to find um examples of of that either so there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of real situations that do happen then you got like hikers people go people get a little bit off grid um and you're away from cell towers Having having this type of know how and having something that you can throw in your backpack is also, you know, a really effective mm-hmm. uh, backup communications. But um, you know, I I the the question gets thrown out a lot, and uh, when I hear people talking about like ham radio licensing, and they say, well, you know, why do you need a license anyway? You could just use it without a license if you're in an emergency. That's the big that's the big thing. Well, it's like, well, yeah, but do you really know how to use it? Do you Without you need to you need to get your license to yeah. get the radio so you can make the contact so you can test okay how far can I reach out with mm-hmm. this is there a repeater in my area which you know for most people there's probably a repeater in your area that yeah. you can uh, you can program your radio really easily into uh, have you done any of the repeater operations yet John have you have you tried it out oh yeah 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 there's a a repeater uh, not terribly far from here and uh, actually when I first got my license years ago i would mostly just participate in the weekly nets that they had because not that i was trying to be the the newbie that annoyed everybody by using the net (laughs) to test but i think that's what half of us were doing anyway make sure they could hear me make sure i could actually communicate you know get the uh the the offset set up correctly which i did not at first i could hear everybody nobody could hear me but uh but yeah and there's a lot of power in the repeater networks i think uh, the, the preppers are often thinking about more of uh, simplex, you know, direct radio to radio communication, which, I mean, you do need color antennas and more powerful radios and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I think it's more, you know, um, the way I was, and I think the way a lot of people that are interested in it from a preparedness point of view are, they don't, they don't really need to be sold on the idea. They just maybe don't know where to start. And it sounds like, you guys kind of cater to that very specific sort of thing. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, I mean, we just, we just try to, we just try to make it easy and make it fun. And, um, and I think like you, like what you just said is like a perfect example of like, you know, you've been able to like, if you, if you can make a, you know, if you're making contacts on a net and you're able to, um, you're able to get into your local repeater. Most of those repeaters have um, backup power as well. So mm-hmm. like Simplex is great. And there's also like scanning. You can learn how to scan and and, and, um, and pick up things in your area. But um, having a repeater that has that sort of offline power for local communications is probably really good. Mm-hmm. And um, th- then, then I would say the next thing, the next kind of step up, um, is just like learning HF and what I would say the like compared to a lot of the people that, uh, a lot of the hams that like, I'm, I'm still kind of like an early ham, right? Like there's a, the hams that are, that 
uh, teach a lot of folks, we call those Elmers. That's kind of mm. like the name for the the hmm. hams that like, and some of these guys are like I mean, absolutely phenomenal. Oh yeah. But what I, and so you can, do, I mean, there's so many things you can do with ham radio, but one of the things that I think is probably the coolest for someone who's getting new is that you can just go out to your backyard and you can put up, uh, it's essentially a wire and they call this an, the technical name for it is an in-fed dipole antenna, but mm -hmm. it's just a long wire, right? And that long wire will vibrate at a the HF frequencies, the high frequency also called shortwave. Mm -hmm. And that's where you start getting this bouncing off the ionosphere, this really good propagation. Right now we're in a, fear, a period, now it's all affected by the sun, the solar cycle. Right now we're in a period where the 10 meter band. So every, you know, just to make it really like a, a bit more simpler, simple is like ham radio is kind of divided up into bands, which is just like a set of frequencies, mm -hmm. like 10 meter, 20 meter, 40 meter. So when we say like 10 meter or 20 meter, we're talking about like a set of frequencies. Yeah. 10 meter is like really good right now, which means that if, even if you get that level one um, technician license, you can um, already start making really long distance worldwide contacts. And so that's great for emergency communications and it's great for preparedness. It's also just really freaking cool. Yeah. And you can start logging those contacts and kind of tracking your progress as you go. So that's kind of my background, right? I got my, yeah. like, <laughs> my kind of HF, <laughs> uh, my HF globe here. Uh, let's talk some numbers. I have two numbers related questions. One, I'm sure uh, the pricing for the course is is of interest, but also I'm interested in uh, if you have metrics about like um, what percentage of people start the course but don't finish it, or do you have numbers of people who did the whole course and then got their successfully got their license? I'm not exactly sure how you track that other than just asking them, but yeah. uh, I'd be interested if you have if you know those things. Our system, we've been doing this because we've because we've been doing this for like six years. What we've done is we we track in our um, in our admin console. We can see what questions people are missing on the quizzes mm. and the practice test as they're preparing for the exam. And whatever the worst questions are out of the set of a couple hundred as they're going through the the course, yeah, we then go back and rebuild that material and improve it. So we have mm. a greater than a 99.5% pass rate on the actual exam. So wow. it's it's close to 100%. Um, if, you for, if you take our course and you don't pass the exam, we will give you all of your money back and we will also pay your exam fees, which is like, uh, wow. I think it's like $10. Um, which, I mean, like in this entire year of 2023, we've had like three people that have failed and and usually in those cases like they didn't actually take the class so you'll just go through lesson by lesson um it'll teach you all those things and it's going to make sure that you're passing each lesson at the um at at least like an 85 percent before you yeah. go on to the before you go on to the next one so well, and um I, and i would mention you know just sort of a side note uh i wouldn't expect it to be a hundred percent pass rate because uh, you probably won't say this because it's probably bad marketing for your company, but not everybody is smart enough. Uh, you don't have to be real smart, but you got to understand basic math and basic, you know, some scientific principles and things. Not everybody's going to be cut out for it. And, and frankly, I think I'd rather it that way because if everybody was on it, then it would just be Facebook and that would be terrible. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, I, th I think there's some I think there's some truth in in what you're saying, but I think the thing is like I also from my perspective, and this is a kind of a controversial statement coming from coming from me, but I think that there's been um like some gatekeeping in ham radio too, mm -hmm. like um some people that don't want new people to get into it, but man we've got, you know, from, from a ham radio community, we've got to come together and, um, and just say, guys, let's just, let's make this easy for folks to get in, to get on the air. And, um, that's one of the things that ham radio prep has done so well, actually our, our membership tends to skew like all the way across the, mm -hmm. the, 
the board of like ages too. Like we have kids that are getting their licenses like 10 years old. And then we have people on the other end that are like, you know, in their eighties that are, that are, um, you know, always interested in ham radio and they found, they found ham radio prep. So we scan, we, we really span the full, the full spectrum. And I think it's just important. Um, that's one of, I think that's almost kind of like our, really our biggest differentiator. I think that was one of the things you were asking me, like come into this to say like, what's your biggest differentiator? I think our biggest differentiator is like, we've just made it easier to get into and we've created it step by step and we're not going to try to confuse you. We're just going to give it to you straight. Yeah. Like this is the information you need. And then videos that kind of animate things so you can see how it's working. Mm-hmm. And um, I think people are just going to be surprised like, Oh, this is easy. It costs 35 bucks for our, um, our level one course if you want to add like the level two to get on HF, which opens up that worldwide, or if you want to go all the way to level three or add more courses, you can bundle. And the more you bundle, um, the more you save. Right. And I think actually for your channel, we're even going to do a discount code for all your channel listeners. Nice. So we'll, uh, we'll hook up anybody that wants, you know, any of your followers that want to get in, we'll just add another 20% discount on top of that. Awesome. Well, that's not bad at all. I would have, uh, definitely, been interested in that when I started. Um, yeah, I, I need things, I need things pretty digestible if I'm going to do, you know, uh, hands off learning and it is hands off cause you're not physically doing the thing. You're learning how to do the thing. Um, but I would, I would have certainly been interested in, uh, in that kind of thing, uh, back then. Um, here, well, I'll give you a, I'll yeah. give, I'll give people a, a quick demo. Um, are you able to see my screen now? I am. Yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty simple, right? You got your level one, your level two, and your, your level three. Um, the questions inside Ham Radio Prep are always up to date, but you know, the questions change periodically. But if you come into Ham Radio Prep, you're always studying the most up-to-date questions. Mm -hmm. And then when you come into the actual course, it's just, uh, you know, a level, level one or lesson one, rather you go through, it's going to teach you, uh, some of the information around lesson one, lesson two, you basically go through and each lesson is teaching you a different topic. Like this one's talking on ham radio and then this one's, you know, operating repeaters, emergencies. And a lot of these will actually have real ham inside them as you're operating too. So Mm -hmm. it'll it'll kind of teach you as you go, or it'll have some graphics like around repeaters to teach you it. Mm. Then you've got a text lesson. So you reinforce what you read, what you just learned through the video by, by reading it. And then you move on after the text lesson into a quiz. And so by the time you're finished with this, which each each lesson here is only like six to eight minutes, so it's really short. Yeah. You go through that by the time you're here, then you're into the practice test. And uh, it's telling you if you're ready, you know, it'll tell you when you're ready to take that real exam. Mm. So you you get to the point where you're just taking practice tests at the end. Yeah. And it tells you where to go where to go back and review or if you're ready. And then you, you know, book that uh, in person, uh, the in person exam. So, I mean, like end to end taking this whole course, um, really only takes you a couple hours and you can even go and take the level one and the level two courses at the same time. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you, if you submit a form with passing the exam at the end, we'll send you a free gift, which I won't give it away what it is here, but we send you like a small, uh, a small little, uh, package just as a token of appreciation for taking the course. Uh, so not a Yasao console or anything. No. Right. That's yeah, that would be that would be pretty cool if we sent you like a huge HF radio or here's something. A, a thousand dollar radio, nine hundred dollar radio for your thirty five dollar course. Yeah, I'd definitely sign up for that one. Um, uh, well, two more questions that come to mind. Uh, one, do you have a sense of uh, how many people have gone through the course to date? Oh my gosh! You don't have to get uh, well, specific, but. Yeah, we, I you mean, know, tens dozens, of thousands, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, tens of thousands. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. But again, we've been doing it for a while, right? Like I think we first launched in, in 2018. Um, yeah. so we've been doing it for a while, but it's in the, yeah, it's in the, the tens of thousands overall at this point, you know, Well, that's awesome though, because when I was looking up how many new, um, United States licenses are issued every year, it was, it was in like the the thousands range, not the hundreds of thousands of range. 
So if you're at tens of thousands think, after a few years, you're you've already got a huge like share of the people learning these things. For sure, yeah. And I think I think it's maybe like in a yearly basis. I think I think maybe thirty thousand. I think is the last I heard on like mm. the new okay. the new hams. But then you have also people that upgrade, right? Sure. So yeah, that's you might true. have people going from tech mm -hmm. to general or from general to extra. Mm -hmm. um, most people kind of stop at general. We're trying to we're trying to get people to go all the way to extra. You do get some like special band allocations with the level three where you might be able to uh, have some conversations where you're kind of out of the out of the mess, out of the traffic a little mm -hmm. bit because if you go all the way up to um, level three, um, I guess I'll also kind of introduce something to your audience, which I think is important, um, which is around like spectrum defense. Um, so all this, all the airwaves are governed by the FCC, mm -hmm. the Federal Communications Commission. And there's some news that came out recently. It's pretty good news for amateur radio where the FCC is taking down some of the limits on some of the bands to allow higher baud rate, higher data transmission rate, essentially, which is a good sign saying the FCC is friendly to amateur yeah. radio and they want to bolster the service. That's really good. There is also another thing that's happening right now on the 60 meter band where they were looking to standardize based on some international recommendations and they were going to take away some bandwidth. Well, uh, make sure you sign up for our email list or you just, if you just sign up to, for the course or whatever, we'll send you, or even just follow us on social, we'll send information about this. But essentially anytime uh, the FCC wants to change something with amateur radio, notably if they are thinking about taking away some spectrum, yeah. We send out a notification about it and you can go comment to the FCC and say, hey, we're using the spectrum, don't take it away. And it's important to do that because in most cases, if they're going to take away some spectrum, it usually just goes in one direction, right? Mm -hmm. Like usually yeah. they're not like adding new spectrum. So it's like, even if it's a little, uh, sometimes when we put out like a spectrum defense, some people will say, oh, why are you guys, uh, why are you guys making a big deal about this? It's just a couple kilohertz of spectrum. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, yeah, but you do that like 10 times and now we've like kind of lost some of the, the yeah, stuff on yeah. hand. So I don't want to be a, uh, like a downer we're not it's not like we're at risk of losing a lot of spectrum or anything but it is important when there's something that's up for debate that um yeah that the radio community comes together and makes a comment on it and you're saying sign up for the newsletter or follow social and you guys send out updates about goings on in the in the the fcc and amateur radio world yeah Exactly. Great. Uh, a quick question is the uh, I, I didn't think to ask this a couple minutes ago the 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 education the platform that you were that you were showing us a, a sneak peek of is that all uh, mobile friendly? Can, does that look and work well on a phone? Yeah, we actually have um we have a separate mobile app and this oh, is a, okay. this is a hundred percent custom development that um that our development team has put together. It's on iOS or Android, just called. Uh, ham radio prep mm -hmm. but actually uh i don't know if you can see this all the videos yeah. and lessons are available here great um so you can come in and watch the watch the videos read the lessons take the quizzes and we even yeah. actually have some more advanced stuff that's available on the mobile app so okay it'll track like your missed questions and tell you where you need to go back and study because we've because we've built that from the ground up and it's completely custom yeah um we have some more uh, we have some more like flexibility and capability around the stuff. And then we also have a log book. So mm -hmm. like once you get into ham radio and you like making your first contact, once you do that, you're like, Hey, I want to log that. I want to look that person up. I want to have a record of my contacts and track my progress as I get better. Worldradioleague.com is our new log book application where you can log your contacts and, um, and chat with other ham radio operators, find other ham radio operators in your area. And we're adding a lot of uh, new functionality to that too. So uh, that's great. If you're, yeah, I know that's probably a little more on the advanced end once you're kind of into getting yeah. into ham radio a little bit more, but um, that's another really good ad and, and it's free to sign up for World Radio League. We do have memberships for some of the more advanced features, but mm -hmm. for most people, you can just get it and start logging for free and, okay. you know, and, you're off to the races there. 
That's great. I, I really enjoy that it uh, to, to go back just a little bit that it's all very mobile usable with the app. I'm not necessarily this way because I think I was supposed to have been born in 1925 or something, but I like to do everything on a computer, like, you know, like the people in 1925. Uh, but everything's phones these days, of course. And I could see people on their lunch break or just about anywhere. Let me get in a lesson here and there. And of course, lots of people just don't even have a computer anymore. So no, that's great. Uh, the, the mobile app sounds. We actually have more people studying on the mobile app than we do on the desktop these days. It's yeah. crazy. Uh, we, you know, people love them. People love the mobile app, but that's the thing is when, whatever, whenever you, wherever you purchase, if you purchase on the website, you get it on the mm -hmm. mobile app, you know, automatically, if you purchase on the mobile app, you get it on the website. So okay. it's, it's all connected, but yeah, yeah the, I, th I agree. I think the mobile app is, is the way to go. Well, uh, James, thanks again for talking with me today. And, you know, everyone make sure to check out the video description, uh, link to the website the, the, where you can sign up. Uh, and, and if you do want to sign up, make sure to use the, the code so you get a discount. And uh, mobile, check out the app. And once you get into it, check out the World Radio League online logbook. Thanks well, again, James. And, uh, you know, hopefully and if there's can... anybody, if there's anybody listening in Georgia, we're going to be at the ham fest. We've got a stone mountain ham fest in here. I don't know, you probably got listeners all over the place. Mm -hmm. So just on the off chance, somebody else is in Georgia. We'll be at the ham fest in Georgia, uh, out giving away some free stuff and, and talking to people about, uh, ham radio prep and the world radio league. So yeah. Right. Um, if you're around, if not, we'll see you on YouTube and, um, John, it's been a pleasure. Thanks. Hopefully we'll check back in with you sometime down the road. All right. We'd love to. All right. Have a good one.